Here we go. And we're live, I think. Hello, shenanigans. Invite. And water vixen. Hello. Hello, everybody. Um. Uh -huh. What is it? I'm gonna try really hard, but I don't know if I'll be able to keep my video because I have my device plugged in and it's hard to prop it up. God. But look at all my glorious wisdom highlights. Do you, do you, do you love them? I love them. Beautiful. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> it's amazing. I'm over here trying to MacGyver something real quick. Curious. We're getting educational. Um, what? Uh, for so those who don't know, I library is uh, pretty blind like me, so we can't. <laughs> uh, not wearing glasses is for aesthetics. <laughs> yeah, I took my glasses off so the filters work because I I usually be in hot mess. My that's what filters are. That are actually like getting our life together. Turn my brightness up a little bit for me. So we're just waiting on Inaru. I thought yes, Inaru had a thing, or or did I mistake? Who's unavailable tonight? Oh no, they had a thing. So they weren't going to be available for the call prior to this. They will. They should be available for uh, the live. Oh, dope. Okay, cool. Yeah. I don't know why I made that for. Gusta casa cabo. Miari. The way I say it has is sticking in everyone's heads. Gusta casa cuda, technically. Yeah. I don't say that one as often, though. Most of my videos, I do them like in the morning and then I know they may not take forever for me to actually like post like sometimes I'll post a video like 20 times because the first 19 times there's a bag that's lame y'all seen those videos little anime chick that's like do 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 yes <laughs> It has been feeding my serotonin do, all day. Do, do, do. <laughs> that song's stuck in my head now. We sing it all the time. <laughs> so we're just waiting for uh, Inaru. And then uh, before we jump into tonight's discussion, which is on uh, Elva, are we going with. Was it with righteous or justified, which was the word we chose? I mean, I think I that they're synonymous they in my opinion. Of... I know, I just, well, well, whatever. But I think justified, justified anger. Um, yeah. yeah, justified because right, righteous was the goal. Was the goal. Yeah, no. yeah, I think that's why we changed it originally and then I couldn't, I think, whatever. Yeah. So, uh, that's what we plan on talking tonight. We're just waiting for Inaru. And um, given the current events of our island this week, we are going to do a little. What? 
um, do a little blessing beforehand. So we're just waiting. I messaged her because I don't know if she had that other other thing come up. I'm over here being mad, annoying, and noisy. I'm so sorry. And uh, I'm getting really mad at this app, you guys. I don't know how I kicked every part of It says go live together is turned off. Why is it turned off? It's the live it did it to you before. Yeah, because whenever I try, it, it said, oh, now I can receive guests. What happened? Why do you do me like this, TikTok? It thought that it carajo. Except. Yes, yes. Yes. I don't know. <sighs> Every time, man. Yeah. But, and see, I'm at my parents' house. They're supposed to have better... <laughs> I don't understand. Well, we're back, so yay. <laughs> I don't have no enhancements or anything either. I don't know why. Kay was saying um, with regard to what the islands are going through right now. Yeah, so I was saying, there she goes. There goes our beautiful Inaru. There she is. We we're just waiting for her to join. Um, and before I do not mean to put her name. I know, Elva and I are so terrible at it. <laughs> we chat. <laughs> Hey, hey everybody. How y'all doing? Hey. Now that this beautiful woman is here. all this hotness. Yay! So what I was saying uh, is that uh, given the events that have occurred in Borinquen and that have... Uh, Sorry, I have a smudge bowl here. Uh, in Kiskeya, we have decided collectively to open tonight's circle with a little blessing. And so, you know, we're going to do that now. And I, I'm, I'm going to ask you, all you ladies, my lovely co-hosts, have what I asked you to have? Good job. Yes. Cool. Yeah. Got it. Okay. So, I want to take a moment and I want to make acknowledgement and offering first. To, and you all will have to tell me whose land you're on, the only person who I really know. Tech, well, everyone, I think, except Elba. Uh, you know, first, I like to uh, acknowledge the land we are on because all of our prayers pass through the ancestral lands because these are not our homes. I am in Lenape Hoking, Canarsie. Uh, Shenanigans is also in Lenape Hoking, Canarsie. Uh, Inaru 
Go ahead. I know you're Lenape Hoking, but I don't know who else is there. So, um, Lenape Hoking. Um, uh, they also refer to this uh, this part of Lenape Hoking as uh, Kakunak. And the lovely Taino Library. Land. Are you frozen? I can't tell if she's frozen or not. I think she is. Right now. Oh, there you go. Oh, I was saying land. The people of the land you're on. Oh, I am on Seminole land. Thank you. Our ancestors were here too, but this is Seminole land. Yeah. <laughs> But also, and to offer and ask uh, Akabe Aguama say to, you know, while it's important to remember that Waguama say is, you know, hurricane and destruction and, and all of that, that's only one aspect of what it really represents, the representation of destruction for cleansing. But in as much as that is the case, the land is really hurting. Um, anytime there's massive flooding and all of this stuff, the uprooting of trees and, you know, the hurting of the people of the land. And it's important to understand and acknowledge that anything that is buried in the earth that is remnants of our, our ancestors, of the old people, any of our, the, like, Taguana, any of that stuff that can all be damaged from all of this rain, from all of that stuff. And so we want to take a moment to just um, acknowledge all of that and acknowledge the pain that the land has suffered. And of course, the people have suffered and know that, you know, we understand that this is kind of a cycle, a part of it. And it's Sometimes, you know, the earth heals itself when we go through this. So just wanting to acknowledge all of that and taking a moment and let us be grounded and have appreciation. And the strongest prayer is gratitude for the fact that anyone, you know, of us that has family there, that they are safe, even though things may be lost, things are things, but life is everything, right? So um, if anyone has family back home, I hope that they have heard from them, that they're safe, or they'll hear from them in the coming days. And I don't know if any of you have anything that you want to add or say in relation to that. I think you said everything beautifully. Thank you. We're good. So I'm just going to... Anhan, 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 Katu. Now we may proceed with Justified Anger, brought to you by Taino Library. <laughs> oh, goodness. All right. So, who would like to start? Well, I mean, I guess I could introduce myself. Um, being a little bit greedy here with a snack. Um, so I am borrowing Taino Library's backup account. I am actually shenanigans and coffee. Um, we're not going to use my government name because TikTok. Anywho, uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll be discussing... I'm sorry, did we agree on righteous or justified anger? Justified. And reconnecting, right? Justified anger, yep. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think Taino Library had some uh, some some notes on our talking points. Yeah, yeah. I believe the first the first thing I think a lot of people are angry about is colonization. So I think it that's a that's a pretty good place to start. It, it's a heavy topic, I think. Um, there's a lot of layers when when it comes to just the idea of colonization and the anger that comes with it, right? Um, I know for me, 
becoming an adult and then <clears throat> learning so much history that I did not know was incredibly frustrating. And like reaching out to, to family members, like, why did y'all never tell me this stuff? Why did nobody teach me this stuff? You know, um, I was angry in that aspect, almost like, um, like information had been withheld, you know? Um, and then you also think about the fact that maybe it wasn't willfully withheld, right? Um, it had been forgotten because of assimilation. You have to dig and dig and dig until you find the family members, um, that that do know and can confirm for you um not just Taino history but can confirm for you your own family's um history within that right and then again speaking from my own experience knowing my genetic makeup so now I'm sitting here and I'm like ravenous for information, right? And I'm reading everything I can find online and I'm like spending hours and hours in Barnes and Noble reading books that I can't afford to buy. Um, <laughs> you know, and the more that I'm, I'm, right? The more information I was consuming, I found myself in another level of anger. It went from, why ain't y'all tell me? To, holy crap, people in my own family did this to people in my own family. And it's like that identity crisis that falls in there. And now you're like, I'm mad at myself, but I'm also mad for me. Uh, <laughs> if that even makes sense. But yeah. there, there's so many layers of it. And that whole decolonizing oneself and then trying to re-indigenize by learning the culture, learning the practices, learning um, etiquettes of social spaces and, 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 and certain events. Um, mixed kid identity crisis. Yes, it is very, very real. Um, kawaii girl, Katie. Um, definitely. So so many things that we can dive into here, but um, it's absolutely a process of, of pulling back all of the different layers that are there and trying to examine them honestly and then where where you fall as, as an individual human within this whole giant mess. Absolutely. There's no space for you here. Move. <laughs> Is Storm in the way again? <laughs> We're taking a moment for our kitten break. Sorry. She 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 almost jumped into the smudge bowl. That's really what the problem was. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Storm says she I just say let her life. be a bruja too. I just saved your life, okay? But, you know, um, I I wanted to piggyback on what Shenanigans was saying. It's like, it's one of those things that you're, you know, you just, at first, it's like those levels, right, of um, just acceptance, right? You go through these levels of like, you know, first you're like, really, okay, you're in shock. You're like, wow, like I found this out, right? And then it's like, you know, well, why didn't I know about this sooner? Or, you know, then you get really sad and you go through this process, right? And then and then you finally go uh, to acceptance. It's like, okay, you know, I understand why this happened. I understand why that happened. And let's move forward with um, the knowledge that we have. And, you know, knowledge is power, right? You know, you hear that all the time, but you also, you know, it's, you know, there's strength in numbers, right? To use another saying, that's, you could hear a lot. So, um, you know, that's why we're kind of coming together. And then, you know, through these conversations, you know, just like even over coffee, you know, with fellow Taino 
fellow indigenous Caribbean folks, they'll say, oh, wow, you know, your family did that too? Oh, my family did this. Oh, wow, for real? You know, like, your abuela, you know, you know, like that kind of thing. So you start seeing a lot of commonalities um, with everything. And you start uh, piecing all those puzzle pieces together. Then you get angry again <laughs> at the system. <laughs> it's like this this revolving cycle, right? Yeah. Um, There's a oh, sorry. I was just gonna say, like, like kind of touching on both of what you you both were saying, and it's a conversation that we've had. And shenanigans, you know, knows knows my dad, and uh, one of the most probably frustrating aspects for me has always been that there's always been a knowledge of where of where we come from and his relationship with his my dad is kind of old that's all i'm gonna say so he's old enough so if we go back into generations like his grandfather um was born before the u.s um came in and like colonized uh Borinquen again so um you know, that, that history there and having that connection and knowing that and him having access to um, his both of his grandmothers and things that he was taught and was passed down to him and knowing that both of them were claiming that they were like, oh, you know, so India and, you know, that's often a term you will hear because that's how they chose um, and started to identify through, you know, the process of what of what happened. And when I say, well, what did they teach you? What do you remember? Like, what, like, give me, like, give give me the knowledge. I don't remember. I was a kid. Like, I didn't care about uh, any of that. And I will say, honestly, too, that's another story that I've come across a lot, that um, our parents and being, and I know that a library, I think the same thing, we were both first generation. So we... How, like there's a lot of connection from our our parents and grandparents to like the land and those histories, but so much loss and things being done because of assimilation, the desire to fit in, you know, after Operation Bootstrap and so many of those different things, and then just um, you know, kind of lacking the the realization of how important this would be to us now because we we wouldn't have those the, that you know those people with that knowledge available. And so it's really, really frustrating. It's really frustrating to know that he's still alive and he could have been giving that to me and, you know, or to the community at large and it's gone, you know? It's gone. Yeah, I, I, I. Oh, you muted yourself. Come back. Hi, back. Baby, come back. Yeah, you're back. Yay! I'm sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> um wh what was I going to say? No, I was going to agree with <laughs> oh, I'm getting feedback. Give me one second. not to play your ref yeah <laughs> but while she's figuring out her audio um to your point Kay one of the things that I was upset about was when I was younger not asking questions and things while I was literally living in our lands and I had my abuela available to me who like was totally living about life you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. We get taught that this is like, you know, it's Puerto Rican. It's, you know, from Spain or whatever. And part of decolonizing is like unlearning that and that, you know, recognizing what is Taino and what is African and what is Spanish. And, and not having an elder there that I would have loved to ask so many questions now. And mm -hmm. she's, not, she's not, she was, she was Taino as all get out like. She had like this tight little bun that she always wore in her hair. And I remember the first time she took her hair down, I was like, oh my God, woman, your hair is long as hell. Like it, like, it was like a wedding train. It just came mm -hmm. down and hit the floor. And I was like, are mm -hmm. you serious? And you know, those are like 
little things like that sometimes that you're like, the signs were all there. How did I, how did I not see this? So not only are you kind of angry at, at, at the fact that you didn't know better to ask, but you're angry that you didn't even recognize your own, your own culture. Like, it, and it's right there in your face. You're living it and you don't even realize you're living it because of colonization, because of this false mm-hmm. tree that's been shoved down. Our- yeah. And there's, there's so, to that point also, there's so many things that I know you and I have talked about because, you know, my family, I come from campesino people and, uh, you know, up in the mountains and my grandfather had a finca and they all worked the land and my father can like get anything to grow, you know, like I, you know, all of these, these, these kinds of things. And it's even like, um, we've talked about like cooking I'm like, yeah, I could make an outside oven. I could probably cook on a fogon. I, I've done, you know, uh, oh my gosh, it's, it's escaping me. The one in the ground where we roast the pig. Bucano and like other stuff like I could there's so much stuff that like I can I can do and that I know and I've never it's not it's now it's now at this stage in my life and through the process of reconnecting and all of that that I have learned that all of these things that they did and those kinds of things that my dad knows that I've been taught are all re- are actually related you know that have survived from all that time ago and so it's and and that sometimes too is what makes part of this uh, particularly uh caribbean indigenous identity is that there's it's so much wrapped up into like caribbean identity that we don't necessarily realize that it's actually indigenous yes. until we start learning more and start unraveling and realizing how like it, it's it has been there it's never left it's just married alongside all this other stuff Right. It's like, it's almost like um, dissecting the Sancocho. <laughs> you know, um, you're like, oh, Sancocho, this is great. But it's like, oh, but we got, we got the cane over here and we got the corn and we have the calabaza and we have this and we have that. And you have to be able to pull those pieces apart, right? And then identify them individually. Um, appreciate them individually. Um, store him says something about being translated. I think I missed a comment. Oh, I think it's this one. In, is it the one that was in Spanish and translated to translated to? I could. I mean, there was something in Spanish, but it was, it was like. Yeah, oh, I get it. I get it. Yeah, just that it's sad that it's not. Well, I think that's what not what talk, um not town at home sometimes is what is what she said. Right, and I think that's what um Water Vixen was touching on. She right, said, um. Jazz. Excuse me. Are we in mommy mode? Um, no, 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 I, I, I have a lag, so you were talking when I went to go talk, so I shut myself up and said, I'm sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. My I'm bad. Sorry. <laughs> um, no, what, what Kay was, uh, sorry, what Water Vixen was, um, touching on the whole, um, learning to identify those parallels and learning to discern the things that didn't have names or the things that weren't labeled Daino, weren't labeled Indio. The more that you observe it, you're able to recognize, oh, snap, I did learn this thing. I just never knew that it was an indigenous thing. Mm -hmm. You know, um, a lot like Inaru was talking about earlier too, when you realize, oh, your grandma did that too? Oh, your auntie did that too? And we have like those shared practices, those shared experiences that you think are unique to your own family. Like this is a quirky thing, you know, that, that, that Panchito did. And then you realize, no, this is not a quirky thing. This is a thing that was an indigenous practice and we all kind of know it, but we don't put it in the forefront because assimilation won't accept those things.
Sorry, I'm trying to go. I'm going through the chat. <laughs> I know you're totally on it. <laughs> is my internet that bad, or is she cutting out? Your internet's that bad. You probably have a lot of like a lot of people on because I think the if if people are playing video games and other stuff, you're probably getting getting some lag. Yeah, Try turning your camera so. off. Try turning your camera off and see if that helps at all. The host can't turn their camera off. That's the problem. Oh, well, then. Sorry, I didn't. You guys Womp. are stuck. Womp. It's just like live TV. There's a five-second delay to avoid, you know, to for bad, for bad language, FCC rules. Um Yeah, that's why I keep right. like accidentally interrupting y'all because I realize that you guys are still talking or not done. Oh, it's not the ADHD. It's okay. Kawaii girl Kaiti um suggests. I mean, turning that's off. Too. <laughs> <laughs> no, if I, I'm gonna be gone, you guys. My service no. is crap. So Can I'm you on my Wi-Fi? No, the um, I can't find the thing with the notes. So we're talking about we're we're talking about colonization, all of that, and reconnecting. I should find the thing with the notes. Yeah, we talked about the. I think the next thing we're talking about being called a pretending was. Fine. Blackness, how all of that kind of, um, oh my gosh, self and something that is angering. You, can, I was gonna say, you can tell that all four of us have been around the wire when just that we're <laughs> like, we're all rolling our eyes and groaning and like shaking our head like this. <laughs> That's a, you know what. That's the thing because it's like you don't you not only get it from outside of the community you get it from your own people. Yes, like that's what's so upsetting. I mean, that's the that's the first folks that would come at you too. Like you know, family members or whatever. What are you talking about? You know, or or you know, don't don't forget about your Spanish ancestors. Don't forget about your African ancestors. Like you know, you're not really negating. You're not really, really gating any of your ancestry by recognizing, mm -hmm. you know, your indigenous mm -hmm. ancestry. Mm -hmm. It's not a, it's not a give or take. It's not a competition. Mm -hmm. All you're doing is just, just following a road and that's all you're doing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. In terms of that's concerned, you're following the path of, you know, reconnecting, you know, that doesn't mean you're disconnecting from anything else. You're probably already more connected to a lot of other things because this is, what was allowed right mm -hmm. by by society this was allowed but it wasn't allowed and it kept hush hush about being native or indio or you know taino right mm -hmm. so yeah. and and it's like you know i i i can share a story but i would let uh shenanigans because shenanigans is our guest i'm gonna be good and be quiet for that. <laughs> you can't be good with someone like shenanigans, but um, <laughs> no, what um, okay, pret pretendians, and what was the other piece that you know, library pretendians, blood quantum, anti black, and they all oh, each other. blood quantum. There is okay. sorry, sorry. Right. I think I have to address each of them like separately. Separately. Um, so Inaru had some really great, yeah. great, great points about getting it from our own, like our own people, our own communities. I know I personally got the Snickers from my family, not the candy bar, but like the laughing behind my back and to my face. Oh, you think you're an Indian princess now, right? And I'm like, well, no, because we have an extensive family tree when it comes to our European lineage, like extensive, you know? And 
when it comes to our Boricua lineage, we only have it back so many generations. And it's like, why? What happened? What happened there? Right? Um, and then I, 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 I it, it, there's always a pattern. If you think about like little kids, right? Toddlers, elementary school kids, they're, they're copying the caregivers, right? And when we first reconnect and we're like baby Taino, we're copying, we're emulating what we see. Um, when my kids were little and they played dress up, I didn't say, ah, oh, look at my son. He makes the prettiest little drag queen or whatever. I was like, dope. He's copying, he's copying mommy style, you know, or if my daughter wanted to dress up like a football or baseball player, it, it, it wasn't like me mocking her. It was, oh, you're exploring what it is to be an athlete. Um, unfortunately, though, but when, when we reconnect as Taino, right, we get the jokes. Oh, you think you, you, you think you're Matoka now? You think, you know, this, that, and a third? Instead of, oh, I see that you are emulating what, you're, what, what you see in other people. Um, let me gently take you to the side and teach you different things. Let me teach you why it's not okay to appropriate why it's not okay to just grab whatever flashy thing you like and then slap it on yourself. Um, it, it's very seldom where we find a person to, to pull us to the side and have that conversation, which is what perpetuates the whole pretendian thing, right? And the pan-Indianism. Um, Anti-blackness. Yep. I personally have always hated that. Um, I grew up in neighborhoods where, where the majority were African-Americans, right? So I'm like, you're talking about my best friend right here. You're talking about my classmates. You're talking about our neighbor next door. Um, and it's, it's not a new thing. It's not a new thing, you know? Um, not only did they erase Taino, like, let's not even talk about it. There's there's the constant mejor la sangre, mejor la raza, right? So that anti-blackness has been there since the time of 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 contact with 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 African slaves had had brought to our islands. Um, it's very very difficult. Yes, there is definitely bullying happening to our darker skin cousins. Um, When, when we encounter the anti-blackness, though, it goes beyond racism. It 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 also denies our allyship. You know, um, if we talk about say, Haiti, Haiti would have never become sovereign again if it weren't for the African slaves that were there and allying with the indigenous people there to fight for, for their freedom again. Um, similarly in Jamaica, exactly. if, if the Maroons had not allied with the Dainos, they, they would not have gotten their freedom back, which is way different than emancipation, right? Because emancipation was, we're quietly doing little, little protest but we're not tearing shit up until we get what we want um kind of two different things and i i don't think that it's fair to just discard our our allies or to ignore the fact that of course we intermixed with our allies so we're gonna get afro dinos give me one second come in child Because of the fact that our darker skinned relatives couldn't pass, they, you know, and that's why they say, like, you know, it's easy to claim wanting to be black or whatever until it's time to be black. 
you know, when you're lighter skins or you can straighten your hair and do other things and pass, you know, our darker skin relatives could not do that. So we have that for the aspects of culture that were kept, that are still here. You know, our Garifuna cousins have a lot with regard to language that we are able to turn to and be like, hey, let's compare these language things. We would not have that if they didn't retain their language, you know? So only, not only was there intermixing allyship and all of that, but, you know. Absolutely. As far as like, for two people, um, you know, genetically, but, um, you know, I didn't know if Kay wanted to go ahead and add something on my screen. I just see Inaru's thingy trying to load her. Huh? Oh, I'm just, I'm listening. I was just thinking, uh, you know, the thing with, it, it's a very complicated issue. And it's something that we talk about a lot. I mean, definitely amongst Inaru and, and uh, Taino Library and myself, uh, you know, because it is, it's a very complicated issue particularly within the Caribbean community because aside from racism there's colorism like there's so many layers to to why this problem exists and like um you know even with own families and and you know uh, this is something I discuss a lot about um you know phenotype like phenotype versus DNA colorism racism uh, all those different things they matter because you know, someone's phenotype can be a certain way, but then, you know, genetically or, you know, their parentage is something, you know, that they they may have a whole, like, close relative that's, that's Black, Black presenting, right? And because the other person's phenotype, whatever. And so, like, like people base a lot, I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm trying to get my thoughts out, is that part of the issue, too, is because of colorism, there's so much emphasis on phenotype right where it's sometimes even if you look at someone and if you've ever watched things i think it was like federal like who did like a whole bunch of dna tests on a bunch of like the the staff members because they're like um caribbean they had mexican like you know uh south american central american and it was kind of to make that point about the distinction of like phenotype just because your your phenotype is one thing doesn't mean your dna matches exactly your phenotype that there were people who were um, really Afro-presenting Afro who had more European uh, ancestry in their DNA than some of the lighter uh, phenotype folks. And so I'm just trying to say that it, it is a very multi-layered, very complicated issue because a lot of people don't necessarily understand the differences of these things and how they really play a role. Like, you see me, you would never think that I have brown parents. Uh, but, yeah, she does. But I do. I have brown parents. My mother is it was a very brown woman who, who was grew up in upstate New York. Um, and, you know, people used to think she was black all the time because this was, you know, and this was pre-civil rights here in, in New York. And, um, you know... As as shenanigans said, you know, and my and my sister is like uh, lighter than <laughs> I don't know. I I make a lot of jokes on her, but but I'm just, like all of that to say, like it, it it's just something important to understand, and it's not fair that our darker skin relatives, because they present more like phenotypically with one aspect of who, of of their DNA that they are ostracized and mistreated and like they are less than or it makes them less indigenous or people like to you know throw the thing around oh because it's afro whatever like the hyphenization minimizes the indigeneity and it doesn't it doesn't no. at all no it doesn't no it doesn't and at all it, 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 it's kind of it's really ridiculous because if you look at other indigenous cultures even if they adopt someone like someone full like a group on the res I'm um, just like Lakota or something, Plains person. 
and they adopt a child, that child is indigenous, not by blood, but by culture, because they are indoctrinated and raised around that. They're raised on the rest. They're taught that and they do all of that. And it doesn't make them any less indigenous because their blood quantum is not whatever. It's not viewed that way. And then that's when we start rolling into like the issues on blood quantum and what it really is and how it relates to all of this. And, you know, there's it's really important to understand a lot of these things as a reconnecting person and as a Caribbean person, because though some of those issues affect us a lot more in very um, specific ways than they do some of our relatives. Um, But, you know, blood quantum is like, is literally the death of indigenous people. And I wish that people would get off the soapbox about blood quantum because blood quantum is literally only for treaties. That's literally the only purpose of it. The less indigenous people that they can say there are by blood, the sooner they can steal the little bit of land that they have to honor with the treaties away and leave it with nothing. So it is the most vile thing, the most unacceptable modern, you know, addition to types of like concentration camps and slavery and all of that because it is just you know prove to me how indigenous you are from one drop of blood and I'll tell you whether or not you can live on your ancestral land I'll tell you whether or not you're indigenous and you can have someone who's like if you did a DNA test they're they're 100% indigenous but they can't be a card carrying indigenous person because they're fractional percentages from so many tribes from like intermarrying and all the generations or whatever and you're gonna tell them that they're not indigenous even though they're completely like have only indigenous dna but they just like 20 different tribes but not enough for one to claim them to give them you know to link them to one of the roles or anything it's it's ridiculous so then you start quantifying is, is your toe the only indigenous part of you is it like your left like third eyelash like where where is it well, I think people and conflate um, decedency even- with identity. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That, that's know? a really, that, yeah, no, that's a really good one. Cause that's, you know, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's a very, I mean, I, not that, not across for, I know, oh, I'm sorry. I'm going to like shut up in a minute. Not, <laughs> not for all indigenous people, but I think it is very oh, particularly fired. complicated. Oh, sorry very particularly complicated for for Caribbean folk you know because as a lot of us have said even in your own family you'll get people who who are against you who you know my son is is darker than me and his father is they're very 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 fair-skinned and in front of my brown mother when he was born they literally asked who I slept with to have that child that why was he that shade Mm. I need to take a mommy moment. I'm gonna mute myself. Backward. Sorry, Elba. I you like froze. I didn't hear you. My situation is back. I'm sorry. Go ahead. (laughs) I'm reading the comments. The melanin skipped a generation. For some families are like, did you did you run out of toner? What happens? <laughs> you know? I mean, like, my even, husband's Irish, so yeah. um, that was an issue that I have. But backwards, like I see at the store, my older two look more like him, and my youngest looks more like me. You know, as far as like skin tone and features or whatever. So I would be at the store with my kids. I literally had some random lady walk up to me and ask me what my prices were. For babysitting, because she thought I was babysitting my own kids. Oh my god! Like, are you serious? Yeah, yeah. I was like, ma'am, all of these children, all of them, were pushed out of me. Thank you. Just in the middle of Walmart. Yeah, yeah. I know. What was it? Jasmine made a really good point 
earlier that I wanted to point out. I want I want to say it had to do with like you know ever since she's been on her path that she's ended up teaching the stuff that she's known. So you know it's it's really sad that that um uh, the thing that happens you know once you're reconnecting members that were all disconnected, you kind of become the resident Taino teacher of your family. Like at first they're laughing. <laughs> she's crazy. She thinks she's Indian. And then later on, they're like, hey, so um, I read this thing, this article, and now they're coming to you for information. <laughs> so, you know, it can go, it can go either way. You know, you're going to mm -hmm. have family members that are like, that, that won't accept it or want to shove Spanish pride down your throat. Cause I have those. And then you're going to have family members that are going to be like, this is cool. I didn't know that. Please tell me more. And I think that's a really slippery slope too, right? I've, I've definitely had that experience where um, a sibling or a cousin or someone would, would come and ask me questions. And like, I, I, I am the kind of person who will be like, yo, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> I'm still learning. And I think it's really important to have that transparency though, right? I think it's really important to say, well, remember when you made fun of me and I was trying to learn? Um, so I don't know all of the things yet. What I do know is this. Um, what I understand is this. But if you want to learn with me or if you will let me get back to you so I can look up information about the thing that you're asking me, um, what's, what's interesting is that like, since since me beginning my reconnecting, it's uh, a little bit more than a decade now. So my children have essentially grown up watching me reconnect, right? Um, and even though they were immersed in everything that I'm learning and sharing and experiencing, they're, they're still very much in that space of, well, my skin is noticeably brown. Everybody says that I'm Black, so I'm Black. And only one of them, of the three, completely embraced, yep, I'm Taino. So today, as it happens, my, my, my eldest was asking me a lot of very interesting questions um, uh, about, about tribal tattoos and symbols and things of that nature. And, you know, I'm like, Bubby, I... I think it's dope that you're you're thinking about that but we don't have a lot of information on Taino tribal tattoos I I can't tell you if they existed I can tell you the petroglyphs that are documented I can I can tell you about the biha right the achote that we used to to make the red body paint um I can tell you about hagua that is also used for, for body painting, but there's not enough information for me to say, yeah, we did, or no, we did not have tribal tattoos. Um, and, and, and being willing to, to be that transparent with the limitation of our own understanding or our own knowledge um, is a really important part because if you're still reconnecting and you're still learning and like, even now, I'm never going to say, yeah, I know all the things. I, I don't. I don't. Um, but when when you say, oh, bananas are green, right? And then somebody goes to the store and they're like, what are you talking about? Bananas are yellow. Because you didn't discern platanos might be green or an unripe sweet banana might be green. Because you didn't discern that and they go and see a yellow banana, they'd be like, yo, you lied to me. <laughs> Similarly, if someone comes and asks us a, a, a Taino-specific question, right, and you give an answer, whether you're blowing smoke out of your behind or you honestly think you're giving the answer, but you're completely wrong, and then they come back and, yes, ka kawaii girl, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm a Brooklyn girl all the way. Um <laughs> When they come back and, and challenge you on being wrong, you have to choose between saying, yeah, 
I, I was mistaken in my understanding at that time um, and apologizing or sticking to your guns about your wrong information. And then at that point, the person or people are no longer longer going to trust the validity of, of what you might say. And that goes full circle right to the pretendian thing, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Because they use they use the lack of knowledge against you. And, you know, I've noticed a lot of reconnecting Taino are being targeted. I don't know if that's the appropriate word, but that's what it looks like. You know, as those that are Afro-Indigenous because, you know, it's like they're not allowed, they're not shown grace, they're not allowed to make mistakes out somebody coming at them sideways and being like, well, you're this or that. And sometimes it's from people who, A, aren't even Taino, so they wouldn't know what the hell they're talking about anyway. And B, if they are Taino, they're reconnecting too. Like, who died and made you kasuke? This is this is the thing. If I can, if I can jump in, this is the thing. Are they be are are um Afro yes. uh, Afro Taino uh, or Afro Indigenous Taino people being targeted? Yes, purposefully. Yep. I, I mean, and also too, there's there's folks that benefit from folks not um, knowing enough, right? Especially targeting reconnecting Taino. Um, they benefit from that. Why? Because it's like, it's, it's good to highlight, oh, look at this person. They don't know anything. That means that the Taino is, is true. The Taino are all disappeared. They're all dead. These are pretendians, right? It, people, there's, there's literally a, a group of people, and we know this, that benefit from this. Those in power, right? That already, that are doing land grabs, as we speak of mm -hmm. the totality of the islands, not just Boriken, mm -hmm. but all of the islands, mm -hmm. they're coming in, they're swooping in. They're saying, well, you know what? There's no more indigenous people because the Spanish said so, or the Dutch said so, or the French said so, or the English said so, right? And so, you know, on these platforms, you know, you'll see people like Taino Library, like Shenanigans, here, you know, um, that are say, that are like educating, that are talking, that are sharing, and so on and so forth, right? So we have people that are sharing, but then counter that. They want to counter it by attacking those who are reconnecting. So there's like this chink in the armor. It's 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 a tactic. It's a tactic, and I've seen it. I've seen it not just on TikTok. I've seen this in Instagram. I've seen this in Facebook. I've seen this before, like years. It's been years of this, and it's it's like a playbook. Okay, the gaslighting is absolutely a tactic. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a playbook, and that I I don't want to mention specifically on this slide, but there are entities, there are people who benefit greatly from us, uh, keeping us from our birthright mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. And I mean, oh. sorry, no, I thought you were done. I was just going to say on the added part of just like we're talking about justified anger, what you're you're talking about, Inaru, and, and like what Shenanigans was saying, like that's the, like you mentioned the chink in the armor and that's kind of what it is. And even from a conversation that, I had with Elba earlier, kind of like learning to pick your battles because, you know, there's so much to be mad at. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like they purposely will look for that for that moment or like how to like stir the pot enough to get you to like respond, especially as like what like um and I think Lady Rose said it in the chat too, and we've all said it here that like we're all reconnecting. We're all in the process of consistently reconnecting. And it's a it's a process of continuously learning because as more of us go into academia, there is more research that we're trying to gear towards learning about our ourselves, right? And making that available and consistently reading books or reading books over again or getting access to things and, you know, consistently trying to piece together stuff. And so basically 
you know, we, there's anger for lots of reasons, mm -hmm. but that also this whole thing, like, um, really beautifully how Inaru said about the chink in the armor, like these people who want to invalidate us, you know, who want to invalidate us collectively as a whole, Taino people who want to invalidate Afro indigenous people who want to invalidate, uh, so many different things. Like they look for that and they like, um, like, uh, like hunting prey. You know what I mean? That it, it looks for that one vulnerable moment when the mommy bird leaves the nest and like, I'm going to knock the nest down and get the birds that don't know any better. And that, that's kind of, that's a lot of what it is. And it's, you know, we've talked about how there are discord servers that list the name of like content creators that are BIPOC and purposely doing that so that we're not coming together. And to that point also, when it comes to justified anger and everything, it's really important to know that the more we're fighting each other and we're fighting for validation amongst each other or just with each other in general, the further we're dividing ourselves. And that's kind of, if you look historically, that that's what's happened. The more that BIPOC community and indigenous communities and, and you know, even like you just, you know, breaking it down even more in just the Taino community that we're fighting each other for all kinds of different reasons, the farther apart we grow, which makes us less impactful, less strong because we're, we're, we're fragmented and mm -hmm. that doesn't allow us to unify and present this, you know, uh, collective, collective front. And that, that is a goal. It's um, orchestrated dissent. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And I will always say, I think everyone who is a person of color should read the ISIS papers. Say it again. The ISIS papers. Yes. I think everyone who is a person of color needs to read the ISIS papers. Yes. Um, if I could take a moment, I, I, I just wanted to correct two, two comments that jumped out at me. Um, uh, Justin says that people don't usually target reconnecting people from other nations. Um, that's not entirely true. Um, reconnecting people of other nations, urban Indians um, who are trying to reconnect, displaced indigenous people who, um, you know, finally make their way back to the res. Um, they, they, um, they absolutely do get targeted. Mm -hmm. Um, from our perspective, from the Taino perspective, it's it it appears like it's happening more frequently because it's it's our direct experience, right? Um, but it definitely is happening to other reconnecting Indigenous people, um, almost at the same rate as it happens to us Taino people, other Indigenous people who are not federally recognized. That's that's a big big thing, right? Um, are, are absolutely targeted for reconnecting or even asserting themselves as indigenous simply off the, off, off the basis of whether or not they are federally recognized. Um, and then a real, a real quick other one suggestion. Um, Jasmine says that people be out here swearing the gods that the Arawak and people of the island are gone. Um, absolutely agree with the sentiment, but remember we talked about um, being willing to have transparency in the limitations of our knowledge and being willing to be corrected so you have the correct knowledge. I just wanted to point out that neither Taino or Arawak people have gods. Um, the Garifuna do not have gods either. We, we call our deities, our ancestral spirits by specific names. Um, so I would very strongly encourage everyone present to to learn those names, learn those titles, um, because that's an important part of not only reconnecting, but asserting our identity. Like, no, it's not this thing. It's actually this thing. In the same way, I would say, no, my name is not Taino Karolobui. My name is actually Shenanigans and Coffee. Um, so we, we want to be super mindful of, of those things. Things and I'm I'm not saying it um, to talk down, but more in a way to encourage folks to learn those terms 
so that when someone challenges you and tries to discredit you, you're able to say, actually, I do have this information or I learned this information from specific source material or specific source person as an oral history. And that attempt to discredit you goes where? Nowhere, because now that you just you just made them look foolish because you actually are making that that effort to to learn and retain the information. Kawaii girl, what what is it that threw you for a minute? I'm not familiar with the white buffalo cow foreman term. It's hard to explain. That's fair. That's fair. Um, While we're waiting. You know, you can just sit with your thought. Um, while we're waiting, China Library, what was it? Oh, I, um, on my screen, it, uh, her comment hadn't showed up yet. But um, what I wanted to add to things that you guys were saying as far as like, you know, how some reconnecting Taino get targeted and they're used to invalidate us like, oh, this person, see, they don't even know what they're talking about. You know what I'm saying? Um, an analogy that I think uh, uh, Kay used that was a really good one was, you know, it's kind of like they're being preyed on, you know, because if you're going, if you if you just for the animal kingdom as reference, um, when you see, like, for example, people in a herd, um, these predators are going to go after the weakest one because that's going to be the, e the easiest to, to get to, you know? So that's why they go after reconnecting Taino. And it, it kind of lends to the, the identity crisis and the imposter syndrome that a lot of us have to work through because you're getting so much crap, you know, from other indigenous people, from, you know, um, supremacists and stuff like that. You you kind of start questioning yourself, like, should I even be claiming this? Am I allowed to claim this? And mm. absolutely you are. It is, um, I believe the word birth is used in, in the in the comments somewhere. And that that's exactly it. It is your birthright. Does that mean you're entitled to everything? No, you still have to approach people respectfully, understand that they have their boundaries and their limitations and stuff like that. Um, you know, you can't just go up to Bejique, uh, a Bejique and be like, I want to know Taino spiritual things, teach me all the things, you know, because some things are for everybody on social media and in the public. Some things are for just indigenous people. Some things are for just for Taino people. And then even within the Taino community, there are things, you know, that are just for those who have been, you know, um, assign certain titles and roles in the community. And those are all things that should be respected just because you have um, birthright and all of that does not mean you can come in acting like a Karen and being like, where's your manager? Because you won't tell me something that I want to know. I'm Taino. Why won't you tell me this? You know, you, you, why you are you gatekeeping? I can't do that. <laughs> I was just laughing at it. your What'd comparison. You I was laughing at your comparison of the Karens and um, thinking about the folks who come in with that exact attitude and and make claims of gatekeeping. And it's funny to me because there actually is a distinction between gatekeeping and safeguarding. And those be the people that don't Absolutely. know the difference between the two. Could, could you elaborate, please, for the people in the comments? Sure. So um, I'm, I, I try to use myself as an example as often as possible. Um, what I do in my home often is very similar to what my sisters do in their homes, right? Because we all came from the same household. We were raised by the same people we have a lot of similar practices. But 
once we stepped out on our own, we evolved and developed other practices, right? I can walk into one of my sister's homes, sneakers on, keep them on, it's no problem. You walk into my home, A, you should have called me like an hour before you showed up because I'm not opening the door. But also B, you need to take your shoes off, right? I'm safeguarding my home. Those are ways that I safeguard my home. You know what I'm saying? Um, whereas... Have you walking around barefoot? <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, so when it comes to like my yuka yeke, right, and the information that we, um, teach to, to our members or the practices that we have specifically in my yuka yeke, it's not so much, well, I don't want to tell you, it's more like I'm safeguarding it. That's, that's something from inside my home. Um, there's a reason why we come on live and we either keep our videos off or we frame ourselves so that you don't see the entire house, the entire apartment, entire everything. Some of those things are private. That's not for everybody. I don't need to know what is to Water Phoenix's left. I don't need to know what's on the other side of Inaru's um, device, the camera that's not facing her, right? That's safeguarding. Whereas gatekeeping is, let me go ahead and let me go ahead and floss in front of everybody about how amazing I am. I am the tequila, vehicle slash everything, and I am, <laughs> you know, I, I'm 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 the keeper of all this knowledge. And then the minute someone says, "Oh, great keeper of all this knowledge, teach me a thing," and it's like you're not worthy that becomes gatekeeping. It's a very fine line, but there is a line. Did I make it more confusing? No, it made sense to me. Did you have any it makes sense. I got I got kicked out. What I want the only thing I wanted to say is like from the part where, <laughs> where before I had I had the the issue where um because it, it was in 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 the comment I I lost it now but I replied to the person saying that like you know indigenous people have the right to self identify and so that I just wanted to to talk touch on that briefly because that is also part of this and if anybody's familiar with the Elba or shenanigans help me if I get the, the name wrong like the UN Council on like indigenous people indigenous rights the thing that they started doing several years ago uh huh because they have um I don't want to call it a, like a code or whatever but it's like it, it, it's like a list of rights that indigenous people around the globe have the right to assert um, for themselves, and one of that, and one of them is that indigenous people have the right to self-identify. And so, essentially, what that means is exactly what we are doing as reconnecting Taino. Or let's not forget that while there are over like 520 federally recognized tribes, you know, here within Turtle Island, think about how many more hundreds are not federally recognized because they're just not or there's not enough of them or they didn't have a treaty or whatever the reason is that they're not that doesn't invalidate their indigeneity they are making the decision to self-identify as indigenous people we are sovereign that is our right and no one should be telling you anything otherwise and if they do you can go tell them to go somewhere because we ain't feeling to do that here yeah Folks that get when they when they start reconnecting, they feel a need to like to because of all of the BS that we have to deal with, they almost overcompensate. And then you see reconnecting Taino trying to learn, and then there's reconnecting Taino that have decided, well, 
I'm going to attack any and everyone that isn't doing the things that I just learned to like, I don't know, feel better. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's like the bullied become the bully. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's so sad to, to see when that happens because you know that they're coming from a place of, of loss, of insecurity, with having an identity crisis that they're clearly going through. And yeah, a superiority complex, exactly, which comes from feeling inferior, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it sucks because it's, these are pervasive issues. And it's not just, you know, within the Taino community, we see it. We see it in other communities as well. Obviously, we are Taino, so we're speaking to our community. But, um, you know, you see that, like, they're, they're picking fights, they're trying to prove their taino -ness by, like, you know, being like, oh, you're using the wrong face paint and you're doing this wrong. And it's like, but you don't even know, like, it just, it's, it's really frustrating. What was the uh, Inaru? You wanted to add Inaru? I was gonna say my favorite, the song I made last time. No, 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 that's oh. it. I was just, it was about like Shenanigans the thing that Inaru says. Is. I should make a song. There's no book. And the, this is how you tie, you know, remember, I was like, there's no book. I'm like, this is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's no book. <laughs> there's no book. <laughs> <laughs> Come back, shenanigans. Come back. You <laughs> have folks that are sitting there, like, you know, um, that are not even not Taino coming in and saying, well, you should, or you should, or this is not indigenous, or this is like, this. it's like, who the who, who are you? Like, like, who are you? Like, seriously, like, you know what I mean? You're not part of our tribe, <laughs> you know, and we identify, right? And I think that uh, what you were uh, speaking on um, what earlier was um, Article 9 of the uh, UN Declaration mm -hmm. right, of Indigenous People's mm -hmm. Rights. Yeah. Indigenous peoples and individuals have the right to belong to any to an indigenous community or nation in accordance with the traditions and customs of the community or nation concerned. No discrimination of any kind may arise from the exercise of such a right. Okay? That person that was going on and telling people what they should or should not do or the group of people that were doing that had no business had no business. So I'm just saying, I'm just going to put that out there right now. It's right there. I'm going to um, try to link it, if I can, to the comments, if y'all want to. Coming through, and you know, she was like, let me, let me relive that body fury. I love it. I'm here for it. <laughs> and even I also into that kind of following oh, sorry. Learn. Oh. Oh, go ahead. No, go it's ahead. okay. Go ahead. I was just gonna say, uh Inaru, the video that you posted recently. So how do I Bugs off the plants? I don't. Uh oh. Sorry. Wait a minute. I don't know why this. Did. Somebody's what? plants did what? What? Yep. It's like little shop of over there. The, I was trying to get the PDF to to link it to the comments, and I opened up a video by accident. Okay. Technical difficulties. I'm sorry. As you were stating that, I'm oh, sorry. The child has started to let the world know he's he's there. Um that um the other thing actually that was from this this year's un <laughs> summit correct the one that you posted where they mentioned the taino yes. yeah so uh, could you could you talk about that video for a moment because i know that there's a lot of newer reconnecting people in here and i i think for the three of us when we saw that we talked about a lot how really powerful um that was for us to hear us named for recognition 
Yeah, um, you know, uh, so basically uh, there were, uh, in the topic of, of indigenous folks uh, uh, that are living in the U.S. Um, or native folks in the U.S., um, that particular um, uh, official from the U.N., I, I, I don't remember what country they're from. I could probably, if you give me a moment, I can pull up the... Um, addressed uh, the president Biden and uh, his government uh, stating that they should address a lot of the issues with people who tribes who not only are federally recognized state recognized but uh, that are um, you know detribalized right or tribes that have um, lost their recognition and and he mentioned that you know um, including the thing, you know, in, in there. And, and just to hear that uh, from like the rest of, I mean, to tell you the truth, like the rest of the world kind of like pretty much sees us, right? Um, it's just that those of us who especially live in diaspora in the United States, no matter what, what island you're from, you know, we get the good old like US of A, you know, kind of definition of what is native and everybody has this perception of the Hollywood Indian, right? Mm -hmm. The Hollywood Indian from the 1950s, most likely played by a, a Mediterranean actor who's not even native or indigenous and things of that nature. So, and everything is like about blood quantum, phenotype, you know, all of these other things. And it's way much more complex than that. Um, in terms of our history, we were the first to be invaded. Like that's 530 years, 1492, it's 2022, 530 years. And I would like everyone in this, uh, in this live to give yourself a hug and give yourself a, a, a rounding sound of applause for being here and, and showing your ancestors resilience. You are the representation of your ancestors, all the sum of your ancestors. So don't forget that. Mm -hmm. Or as, as an addendum to that, the other thing that I often tell people in our community is that you are the link in the present between the past and the future. Helping the people that lost their lives, had their lives taken from them, uh, you know, all the things that happened, you are helping heal all of that pain that has come down to you and making that choice and to continue moving forward with that. You are a link and a broken chain and you are like doing the work to mend it and repair it and, and fix it so it can keep going on. Never underestimate the value and the importance of your decision to reconnect and what that means for you as an individual and what that means for you in terms of your family and in the terms of our larger Taino community. It is no small thing to make the decision to reconnect. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I mentally equate it to um, like land back. Darkhorn's in here making it rain. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, I mentally equate it to, to oh. land back, you know. Um, there are a lot of instances in Boarding Camp um, specifically that stand out to me. Folks who, who lost their properties very recently, right? Um, they lost their, their properties after Maria because they didn't have a deed, they didn't have documentation, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the work that it goes that goes into trying to reestablish that that documentation, that paper trail, and there may not have been one. <laughs> it may have been like a little a little house on a little finca for the last four generations, for all you know. Um, it, it, everybody knew it was like your grandma's 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 house, but now you don't got that piece of paper. Similarly, with reconnecting, right? You're you're doing all of that work to be like, nope, this really is my grandma's house and my grandma's finca. Um, 
when you reclaim the identity of being Taino, you're reclaiming that for all of the people who weren't even able to say the word Taino, let alone Indio, um, or assert themselves. And then you're gifting it to the ones that come after you. Either they catch up to you or um, young ones that you teach later on and you're like, hey, listen, all of this stuff that you already know, but also this. <laughs> and it goes back to my reference about Sancocho, right? Like, you can make a Sancocho and then, I don't know, you got some 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 beef, cube beef pieces in there and you got some corn, you got some calabasa, but then somebody brings sachicha and you're like, oh! And then... <laughs> somebody else comes along and and puts um some peppers in there and it's like yes um so similarly every time you're able to add something uh i think it was it was uh water vixen talking about whether or not the afro acronym in front of afro indigenous afro taino negates or takes away from it doesn't it's like that another one piece that another one ingredient that goes in the pot to make the sun culture more awesome. Um, but it's also acknowledging how these things um, intersect or sometimes overlap. Um, and those, those intersections can be very complementary to each other. If, if, if we, ooh, sorry, I got distracted by a, a comment. <laughs> Many times those intersections can be complementary to each squirrel? other when we're able to acknowledge um, like a Venn diagram, you know, how many circles there are and where those circles connect to each other. That's why quantum is so problematic. It's not even really scientific and everything, but you know, it lends it lends to this idea that when you mix, it takes away from your indigeneity. And it's like, no, these are our roots. This is the foundation. When everything else came in, it built upon it to make the this body, this house, this temple that I'm currently walking through this life in. You know, as our Aboriginal Australian cousins say. You know, it doesn't matter how much milk is in the tea, it's still tea. And I'm seeing that they're paying um, cafe con leche. It doesn't matter how much leche is in the cafe, it's it's the cafe. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, or, or how little leche. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's still it's still coffee, like y'all say in New York. <laughs> Girl, go away. Uh, the other thing I was thinking about, I went to go get a book. My mom's from the Bronx. I'm allowed. <laughs> you are not New York by proxy. It don't work that, that way. Hello. Try again. Rejected. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. I went to go get a book because I um I mentioned it, and it's it, it's one of the things. That um, and I know that Inaru and uh, Elba and I have talked about it a lot. That also, um, it is fabulous to read, like you know, the funny book and all the chronicles and all the different things and everything about everybody and uh, you know whatever's Taino. But I also feel really strongly. Um, that it is important to read like BIPOC things in general and understanding the experience of other people and perspectives and all of that. And a lot of things that I've been adding to my library are indigenous books specifically um, because it's important to remember as because we started the conversation about decolonizing. And I know that I've said this, I think, on almost every live that we've been on so far that the act of decolonizing oneself cannot happen without indigenizing oneself. You cannot do one without the other as a reconnecting indigenous person. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's so critically, critically important. So I encourage you to um, 
read things that are written by other indigenous uh, peoples that talk about, like there's one, I'll show you. It's like my story time with books. Uh, I haven't read it yet, but I'm really excited to read it. This talks about precepts for, um, you know, written by indigenous people and talking about indigenous principles that are really, really important. And looking through it, I almost started crying because there are things that I talk about all the time in building um, community. This is, yeah, this is the one I told you guys about that I'm, I'm really excited for. Um, and then... I have a really good, it's stacked under like four of the things, but there's a book from written about uh, blood quantum from a totally indigenous perspective that I have that I want to read and it, it's, you know, whatever. But this is the book also that I was talking about that I was like, I feel really strongly that every person of color should read every BIPOC. Um, it was written by uh, psychiatrists. Some of the stuff, it can be like a little dated or repetitive, but really what she does is she breaks down white supremacy and explaining white supremacy and how it affects particularly the, the black community, but it also relates to other communities of color. And she goes in and explains like how the, how the cross was stolen and emasculating people and, you know, the AIDS epidemic and crack epidemic and all these different things that are done to the communities and how to break them. And, you know, a lot of it is really, um, you know, important and interesting because it's, it, you know, it makes you feel like you're not crazy. And this is like from the seventies, I want to say mm -hmm. it's a collection of her like papers and stuff. I think this one's redone in like 89 and 91, but originally like they're, they're, they're older ones anyway, but I, it, it can be a little hard to find, but I, I recommend this one. I see people talking about books. So if you look, I only have like two videos on my account and like on my pulling the divine, I think I have like four, which is more spirituality because I don't really like the internet. I, well, I like the internet. I don't like social media. I should correct myself. I don't like, <laughs> I don't like to do that. But if you look, if you, I'm actually water school, um, I water on help me somebody. I cannot speak and say my own name <laughs> thank you i was struggling um there is i tag another creator on the app it's um decolonize your bookshelf or if you look up paperbacks and fry bread it is an, a female indigenous owned bookstore and she has tons and she is where i've been buying all my books from um lately she has tons of BIPOC books. That's all she does. She does um, all like Latinx, uh, African-American, Asian-American, LGBTQIA books, uh, tons of indigenous stuff. And um, I really encourage, yeah, if you go to paperbacksandfrybread.com, that's the actual bookstore. She's on TikTok as Decolonize Your Bookshelf. But if you um, look her up or reach out to her, she will definitely make um, recommendations about indigenous um, children's books if you're looking for that. And as far as indigenous Taino books, there are, I don't think that they're actually Taino, but they're, they're kind of, uh, there are some children's Taino books. I know that Taino Library has them on the website, but I was thinking about the one with footprints. I don't think that that's actually Taino. Do you know which one I'm talking about? It's something footprint. It's okay. It's it, it's whatever. But um, hmm. I'm not saying anything, so I don't know if anyone else. Is oh, gonna... okay. I was like, I know he froze. I'm like, I'm like, uh... <laughs> no, I don't know. Everything it just got really weird, and then I just started looking through the chat, and I was like, I don't know. Well, um, 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 Atariba and Nikuiona was is a is a good one yeah, that I um, uh, that's a good one that uh, I used to read a lot to my friends, um. 
the golden flower Taino myth um, from Puerto Rico. That's a good one. I mean, we have to remember that even if it says a Taino myth, some of them are kind of like retold in, um, you know, in different ways and, and things of that nat nature. So it's like uh, not every story is going to be exactly the same because um, as we discussed in our last live, uh, some of our stories um, that were written down were incomplete. And so a lot of modern writers have to uh, fill in the blanks um, and things. And a lot of them write in not in an indigenous perspective. A lot of them just write as, okay, I'm from this island and this is a native story from my island and I'm just going to write on it. You know what I mean? So you know, some of them, now we're getting ones that are from <laughs> point of view, like as far as children, uh, books and stories and things. I mean, I think Lynn Guitar has a few uh, children's books, youth books. <laughs> Am I wrong? No, right. that's correct. There's, you know, there's like a whole series. There is a book. Oh my gosh, I gotta remember. It's, but you can only get it from her. I don't know if I can, I have go to Oh uh, no, there was I was just gonna say that I know that there's a book written by someone from Jamaica who I believe is Taino identified. But yeah. you can only buy the book from yeah, and I can't remember the name of it. I have the uh, Balanani. I think it was not not Balanani, um Boyanani. Boyanani. Yeah. I have that book. There's that one, but it's not it's not easily available. But I mean just general indigenous kids' books, like Definitely, I would talk all the books to... that are being mentioned. If you guys go, if you guys go to Linktree, like, uh, there's someone saying that they want the Taino language book. Are you referring to Hiwataya? Sorry, I gotta. So, hear me being stupid, but if y'all go to Linktree slash Taino Library, you can see all the all all the links. But there's also Linktree slash Taino Kids, and all of the books that um have been mentioned so far. Most all of them are on there. Um, they're not all necessarily available to read for free, but there will be links to like how you purchase the book. Mm -hmm. Including Hiwatahia, the Taino language book. Oh, I was sorry, I was confused. You were talking about in the link. Uh, I was just going to say about Hiwatahia that it is it is currently sold out, and it is only printed like in in batches. It's like you know for order uh and there is i don't know if there's gonna be another run for a while because there may be um an updated version soon that uh shenanigans they were asking about he with you got it got it because there was there was a couple of people that after that they like yeah so, and you know, to kind of get I was um, while say, we wait but, for um, we're getting close to, to the nine o'clock mark, and um, I know that one of the last things we wanted to talk about. I'm sorry, can, can y'all not hear me? I can hear you. Now I can. I got a little bit of a lag on my side. Y'all can hear me because the sound is being stupid. Well... 
I bet you y'all heard that. No, I only heard you say y'all heard that. I just like um, if you. I'm sorry, Elba. You you have linked the. It, there is an Instagram page for Hiwataia that if you can go find it, and there is tons of stuff posted there on Instagram related to Hiwataia. If that's something that you're interested in, thank you so much, shenanigans. Because apparently, I don't know how to type. Uh, <laughs> uh, Elba, you were saying that since it was almost nine o'clock, you wanted to. Uh, there was another point you wanted to make. Oh no, did you freeze? Did I freeze? I think I froze. Okay. You're not for. I can hear you. Oh. I think. Oh, <laughs> I think it's Elbow. Oh no. Oh yes, solutions. Next topic, uh, anger solutions. What what can we do as solution? Um, can I can I um start off with that as far as solutions? Yes, please. Um, you know, as as a reconnecting Taino, um, I felt. I felt it uh, very healing. Uh, I, met, I saw in some of the comments, uh, you know, going to powwows and things of that nature. I mean, you don't really have to wait for powwow season. Sometimes if you look um, up your local Indian center or you look up uh, maybe uh, a, a place where they have like um, native organizations or anything like that, you can um, see if they have any events that are open to the public. And, you know, you could just start uh, talking to other natives from other tribes um, and just kind of like being, being there, you know, uh, of course, respect, respectfully, you know, you don't want to say, hey, well, I think, oh, well, we do it this way, you know, like you don't want to like go all up in somebody's house, you know, like that. But um, <laughs> that's always that's always good to do. Um so um, I know that October is busy uh, for uh, Native community for Indian country. So like there's going to be plenty of events uh, coming up in October, especially November as well. Um, so you could totally check those out. And I think that those are very helpful. Um, I was, uh, I had stated um, like once you get your ground and your footing and you feel comfortable, you could even host your own events. So um, uh, just this past Juneteenth, um, myself, uh, I'm part of Natives in Philly, and uh, we hosted a, um, a Juneteenth celebration specifically for Black and Native folks, um, Afro-Indigenous folks. So uh, there was vending, and there was like singing and dancing and partying and things, and it was really fun. Um, and it was really great to kind of like break bread with folks and, you know, see the kids run around and, and all of those things. And there's folks from all types, all different nations that were there, especially in the East Coast. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of uh, tribes that have like, quote unquote, triracial mix and things. Um, they're first contact peoples on the East Coast as well. So, yeah, you'll see a lot of similarities. Thank you, Inaru. Um, if, if I can build on that, um, solutions to this justified anger. Um, I would say, A, giving ourselves grace. Um, it's not your fault if you don't know all the things, but also understanding that that comes with a responsibility. Just you, you cannot continue to claim ignorance or you can't um, stubbornly remain in your ignorance while confidently asserting you know all the things, right? So it takes a level of, of a, a balance 
more so of not only that grace for yourself and that patience for yourself, um, but patience with other people. Because we did talk about before um, the parallels that may not be named and um, understanding that sometimes we weren't taught things because of a grander design, right? Whether it was assimilation and um, our folks learned to not be Indio anymore just for survival tactics. Um, and they deserve that grace also, right? Um, and once you're able to, to forgive that, um, you can move forward in, in saying, all right, well, I'm, I'm going to use this anger, um, not so much to lash out and I'm going to be the super warrior, but more so use it as motivation to connect with community, um, connect with various communities, attend these events that Inaru was talking about, um, reaching out to indigenous organizations because I realized maybe not everybody in this life is in New York City um, or even on the East Coast. Um, and it can be it can be really, really lonely um, when you realize just how disconnected you are. Um, when you're in a remote place like maybe Oklahoma or um, uh, Northern California and, and you're, you're further and further away from, you know, uh, the, the southern border. So you're further and further away from, from similar people. Um, but finding those organizations and having both the grace and the patience um, to sit and learn and um, the humility to be like, you know what? My understanding was this before, and now I learned more. So I'm allowed to evolve, understanding that everybody is is constantly evolving and constantly learning. Um, when you put yourself in that in that mind frame, the anger kind of subsides. It doesn't go away. It's it's not going to go away, but it does subside when when you realize that you are cultivating yourself and you're cultivating um, that that growth there. Absolutely. Ahan. Uh Ahan. -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's something that survived 530 years. You know, you have a, you, you talk and then maybe a, a titi or something, and they go, uh -huh. <laughs> just like that, right? And you're just like, whoa, you're out of your seat. <laughs> well, that affirmation has been recorded as uh, indigenous. So, uh-huh. I know spell is some people spell it han han, but it's not han han. It's actually recorded as ah han. So that makes sense. I used to get so confused. I'd be like, what do you mean aha? Why are you telling me aha? Are you laughing at me? <laughs> you walk in the room and my grandma be like, aha. <laughs> he answers the phone, aha. But now I understand you're not laughing because of any you know, imaginary thing, it's on Han. You're giving an affirmation like, dude! 530 years that survived. Mm -hmm. Believe it. And it's those well, little... Uh, I'm sorry. No, I'm sorry. I was just going to say it's it's those little mannerisms um, that we don't even realize have been passed down for so long. I'm sorry, I overspoke you. No, 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 like I wanted to ask, Um, I, I know that there's uh, some question about Bobo, right? Is of it what? Bobo, the, the, wor the word Bobo being... Like for pacifier? Yeah, being uh, uh, probably uh, something has to do with nipple. Probably have to check that out. I might have to also, I'm not, I'm not sure. Yeah, so like something like, like, but which makes sense because those are the, 
those are things that are taught like from mother to child, right? And ding, 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 ding. Don't tell me I'm the only one who did that. That's not just my family. I know it's not. You bouncing the baby up. Ding, 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 ding. Um. <laughs> And just thinking, um, what is it you're thinking, Water Vixen? I'm trying to put it into words. I've been up since like four thirty, so. Uh, as far as solutions for you know, the anger, I think that I want, I want to say that when we look at and we're talking about solutions for anger, that doesn't mean tossing it away. That doesn't mean ignoring it or invalidating it or anything like that. No, but that's kind of where I'm going to in a library. Uh, because, um, you know, all of our feelings, I was going to say, like, you know, not to get rid of the anger because all of our feelings are valid and we have reasons for, you know, feeling them. And that, uh, you know, therapy is, is one way to to deal with it. Um, and the other thing, too, that, that kind of goes in hand with that is kind of just acknowledging the fact that, like, this whole idea of just existing from a piece of love and a and, uh, place of love and peace and everything, being grounded is not the same thing as like love and light parents. It's not, it's not the same thing at all. <laughs> because um, it's really important to understand that in reconnecting, anger is natural. You will be angry. And I kind of almost want to say, like, if you're not angry in the process of your reconnecting, you probably ain't doing it right because you're going to learn some things and, you know, feel some ways about stuff that are going to upset you. And, you know, part of reconnecting is growth and growth is uncomfortable. That's how you know it's changing you. <laughs> And I think all of those things are really, really important to um, acknowledge, you know, and and embrace. And we are going to be angry because we are consistently fighting for validation um, from everyone around us. And that means that on some level, we are consistently fighting for validation within ourselves, from our, with ourselves, within ourselves. From ourselves am i making sense yes um you know and so like uh library said in the comment uh therapy is one really great way but also finding community because this right now what we're doing and and the times and spaces and conversations and years that we all have known each other we have had these kinds of conversations and we have been there and held space for one another. And that's what real, you know, community is, is about in doing that and having people validate you and your feelings and your experience when the rest of the world is telling you that they're not valid. Yes, indeed. But each and every one of you, in here, I don't care if you like, you know, you just want to be indigenous, you're Afro indigenous, blue, purple, green, alphabet mafia, neurodiverse, uh, neurotypical, everybody, you are valid, you are seen, you matter, your indigeneity is not in question, you have the right to self identify. So, all of that. Right. And um, if, if I can just like throw an add on there to Water Vixen saying finding community, um, when you find community that's going to validate you, you should also looking, should also be looking for not only that validation, but someone who is going to honestly check you. 
like, hey, my love, listen, I know that you're doing this thing from this genuine place, right? But also, let me show you the right way to do it. Or let me explain to you why this is incorrect. Anybody who's just going to constantly gas you up might be setting you up. So you do want that validation, um, but also someone who will very honestly be like, um, Nena, no. <laughs> I mean, if we're going to be really honest, I think all of us in our- have... What, what what did you say? I said, and hopefully in a respectful way, you know, like take you to the side and talk to you instead of like dragging you for filth on the internet. Like that's not that. Well, then that person is not your friend. To that. Then that person is not really your community and that person is not really, you know, your friend or, or whatever like that. Because I would, I would think that, um, you know, at one time or another in our own conversations, we have had moments with each other, you know, where we're like, um, I'm going to say something you may not like, but I'm, I'm going to tell you, you know, and like, what about it from the perspective? And then, you know, having a conversation about it and being open to see the, the you know, the perspective and, and kind of and kind of hearing it. Um, but I just like, you know, your anger, justified anger is exactly that. It, it's justified. You're angry for a reason. Um, yeah. and For many reasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I don't know. We don't, well, it's nine o'clock now. But I don't know if there's any other. I know Taino Library asked in the, in the chat. But if there are any other questions um, about whatever. Because I don't know how much, what commitments you all guys have or how longer you want to want to be on um yeah i mean i i agree with uh what was said here um sorry my phone died so (laughs) i was on the the computer and i was it wasn't able to really join on live from the computer but i heard what was said and i totally agree uh with everything so um yeah so that's basically there you go that's that's kind of like my input. Cassie says that they don't have any Taino friends. They're still on this journey. Um, Cassie, I I would I would reiterate, reiterate what Inaru said earlier. Um, finding something local, um, other indigenous organizations that are local to you um, and and indigenous events that are local to you. And the more you engage with those events, the more you will find other people who also believe that they are completely isolated. Um, and although there's a lot of, 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 of negative um commentary out there about online communities um we evolved with the world around us um we're on tiktok right now right so um social media has become a tool for indigenous groups to reestablish and maintain connection with our people you know what i'm saying so um, I, I would say r- utilize both everything that you can connect with virtually, but absolutely anything you can connect with in real life, um, and and go from there. Word, it is not fourteen ninety two anymore. It's Angel Library. <laughs> That's right. Oh, I wanted to add too. If anybody's coming up to you telling you that, you know, you shouldn't be wearing your hair a certain way or whatever, what have you, you know, I mean, respectfully, in terms of like uh, your your, if you have um, face pain or whatever, what have you, respectfully, you know, ask them. Okay, well, 
you know, um, then show me instead of like telling me not to do something, if you know better than what what should be done, right? And don't just take that what one person that one person's word for it. You know, ask around. You know, um, if you find like somebody that you trust or that you feel like you can trust, you know, uh, keep on asking and and use your discernment and um, take a, a whole bunch of viewpoints too because. Like um, I had uh, said in, in a video that I made, um, every yuka yekino has like their own um, practices, their own um, kind of like their own protocols uh, in terms of face paint. You know, some, some you know, the women wear this, the men wear that, you know, uh, so on and so forth. And or and some yuka yekino don't even have those kind of rules. So. Yeah, just use your discernment um, and just talk to those who you feel, you know, very comfortable in, in guiding you. So if that makes sense, I'm, I'm sorry if that doesn't make sense. It's it's the witching hour <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm getting old, so. <laughs> Girl, bye. I'm slow down. My I got some early onset OLD too, Inato. I'm right there with you. Uh <laughs> I still yeah. up. Trying to forget folks' names. <laughs> um, I am too smooth as how do you choose a yukayeke to fit you? Um the whole that's a whole like <laughs> that is. I don't I, I think that might need a whole nother chat, but I would say, how do you find a gym? How do you make friends? Right? How do you choose the space that you walk into? You you check them out. You check them out, you get to know them. Um, I don't know if anybody here has had religious experience, but like, if you did, would you go to any church or would you like visit a church and be like, mm, this ain't for me or yes, I like this space. Um, I, I, I would say explore, get to know people, um, see what resonates with you. Um, and, and, and it's, it's a very individual thing to choose which yuka yeke that you want to go to. And what Inaru said about different communities have different protocols. Some communities may be open to accepting new members and some communities may not. Um, that's not necessarily something for you to be upset about. It's that community's protocol. You know, it's not personal. That, that's just how they do it. And then I'm going to be quiet because Taino Library um, would like Water Vixen to close this out for the evening. Uh, hi. I just want to, uh, before I move on, I want to say that, uh, yes, everything shenanigans and... Coffee said, and I think that Taino Library, you you have a few videos about the topic, don't you? I think I've seen you make some content about Yuka, uh, Yuka Yikis. Am I wrong? Well, I don't know if she's frozen or she can't hear me. Yes, you, Elba. <laughs> I, 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 you cut out. Oh, that was saying, Sorry. don't you, if Sorry. I'm not mistaken, you it, have, I, it, you, everyone's... I was, if I'm not mistaken, you have videos about, like, choosing a yuka yeke, right? Am I not, am I remembering that incorrectly? Or you've made something kind of, like, along, along the lines of that? It's okay. I'll ask you again later because I don't know if it's that you can't hear me or not. Y'all keep freezing on me. Um, but yeah, <laughs> the, if you if you go to the uh, homepage for Taino Library, there there are playlists. Um, you know, some with advice, some with like common misinformation that's being corrected, and books and all of that stuff. 
But I think, but, but, and then to, to Shenanigan's point, the only way you can ever know is really by testing the waters, talking to people who are in that community, asking if there are any like events or anything that they do and hanging out or spending time with people who are part of that community to see if they are your vibe and finding out what they're about and what they do and all of that. That's really the only way that you are ever going to figure out like if it's for you because it has to go by what feels right for you. Um, that being said, I want to thank everyone for being here, for the people that have stayed, and for everyone for sharing in um you know, sharing with us energetically, sharing the space and all of that. And um, again, many, what is, I can't even think right now. (laughs) Uh, You know, keeping the our, our relatives I'm, I'm as I've been up since four o'clock in the morning that keeping our relatives you know in our in our minds and in our hearts uh in Borinquen and in Kiskeya that are you know dealing with the after effects of Fiona and again thank everyone for being here and sharing in the energy with us and my lovely Ladies, if if everything looks okay, you can go ahead and on hand. Uh-huh, thank you. Uh-huh. Oh, thank you everybody. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Bye. Dark one just giving everybody gifts. Finish for real. Shout out to shout out to the people in Ohio. I have family in Ohio, Southwestern Ohio, between Cincinnati and Mid- um, Dayton. Just want to, you know, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Mass shout outs. We're gonna start throwing symbols. We got hand signs for Ohio. Yo 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 yo. yo. <laughs> All I heard was something something Ohio. <laughs> That that's basically it. <laughs> oh, you in Dayton? Okay. I, I feel like we can't go yet because like Darkborn is over here blowing it up and this just like keeps going and like I want <laughs> to interrupt the flow. My my peoples my peoples are all over Ohio, but they were centered in Middletown. My father's side. I know where you are. I think the closest might be Kane Circle, but that's another thing. All right, I'm sorry. This is closed. This conversation. So, <laughs> continue this conversation another day. <laughs> sorry, guys. <laughs> Again, thank you all for being here. And I just want to remind everyone that if you want to follow the amazing co host we have, Shenanigans of Coffee, she's there. And I am Water Vixen. I feel like it's a rock show where we're going to be like, thank you and good night. <laughs> Just foolishness. Um, Thank you all for good having night, me on everybody. the panel tonight. Good night. Okay. Elba, end this live. We're going banana. <laughs> good night, everybody. Love y'all. <laughs> Good night. Good night. I'm trying. I keep hearing y'all talk. I don't talk. All right, I'm about to cut somebody off now if they go to talk. Let me say bye.